Welcome to Das Boat, season two, Dos Boat. Now, in season one, we bought a boat on the internet, sight unseen. This is what we got. This is my boat. I'm selling it from neutral. I think we just broke the ship here. That boat traveled to five different fisheries in three different states across more than 1,400 miles and somehow, what was that? Survived the journey. For season two, we've got a new old boat. We like to call it Dose Boat, one well stocked with fishing memories. It was owned by my childhood fishing mentor, a feller by the name of John Gary. We're gonna drag this classic craft across the upper Midwest, hand her off to some of our favorite anglers, give her a few upgrades, Take her to places she has and has not been before, and maybe oh, yeah. catch a few Ooh, fish. Got a muskie. And like last season, there will probably be some bad ideas along the way. Oh shit, the trailer's rolled. Wow. Whoa. This is Das Boat. Minnesotans love walleye. They're the state fish. And up here in Northwestern Minnesota, you'll find some of the finest walleye lakes in the world. What is your favorite kind of fish to fish? Favorite fish, hands down, walleye. Growing up in northern Minnesota, the targeted species is the walleye. What's your favorite kind of fish to fish for? Walleye. But we're not here to fish for walleye. We're also not here to fish for crappie or any other fish that Minnesotans like to target. Instead, we're here to catch the one fish that no one around here seems to like at all. Have you ever heard of a fish called a sheep's egg? <laughs> not one. They're out there, obviously, and I know a lot of buddies have caught them accidentally, but personally have not. But to target one is just a whole different breed up here in Minnesota. I have, uh, but not intentionally by any stretch of the imagination. It's a slimy bastard. Freshwater drum, or sheep's head as they're known locally, are the only members of the croaker family found in freshwater. They're related to a Gulf Coast fish that people actually do love to catch and eat, redfish. Which gets you to wonder, if redfish are good and so highly esteemed, why are their lake and river dwelling counterparts considered unfit for anything other than garden fertilizer? Is this disdain for sheep's head legitimate or just another case of everyone blindly believing a rumor that something's no good to eat without actually giving it a fair try? In episode five, Callan Miles fished for big mouth buffalo on the Mississippi River in Detroit Lakes. I say fished for because, you know, neither of those guys actually caught one. At least Cal was smart enough to start fishing for other species. Miles just couldn't seem to realize when he was beat. For this final episode, Das Boat traveled about 100 miles to the northwestern edge of Minnesota to meet up with Meat Eater's very own culinary expert, Danielle Pruitt. Danielle's a Texan with lots of experience preparing redfish, but instead here's a shot of her randomly cooking a steak by a river, but you get the point, and you also probably get the point when I say we might need new editors on this show. Anyway, she's going to apply her redfish tactics to freshwater drum and see what happens. Joining Danielle on this mission is Frank Smethurst, our friend from Georgia who you might remember from season one. Frank's caught just about every species that swims all over the world. Quilted. Oh my God. But he's not much of a worm fisherman, which we will cover in greater detail later. Their plan is to fish Red Lake, one of the best walleye destinations on the planet that also happens to have a healthy population of freshwater drum. Too many, if you ask the locals. Frank and Danielle are hoping to catch a few and put them to the taste test. But first, they're gonna meet Das Boat and give it one final upgrade. This is really cool. Yeah, you can tell that this has really been oh around. This boat is a, a historical item. I like the industrial green. It kind of has that sort of a 
M4 Sherman tank look to it? Well, I mean, you know, we're ultimately we're going to catch some different fish, I, I hope, but catching these freshwater drum may have some red fishing to it. That's, that would be great, you know, if yeah. we could target these things in the shallows somehow. Or... Because nobody tries to catch this fish. It's just an accident by catch. Yeah, everybody's disappointed when they catch a sheep's head up so here. So we're going to create a new sport. That makes us pioneers. <laughs> yeah. This is a good boat for pioneering. <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably good that it's got a fire extinguisher on it. Have you ever had a boat catch on fire? Yes. Yes, I have. How did that happen? Mm, it wasn't the boat's fault. <laughs> All right, well, as much as I love the patina, I think we can add a little more character um, and do a little painting. I'm what do you a, think? I'm not a good painter, but I'm game to try. We're going to need help. Yeah. <laughs> To give Das Boat one last little spruce up, we invited Minnesota artist and fishing guy Josh DeSmith over to lend a hand. Hey, hey. How's it going, guys? You must be Josh. I am Josh. Frank? Yes, sir. Right on. Hi, nice to meet Danielle. you. Nice Hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Well, it's a bit of a specimen here. Look at this thing. Um, <laughs> it's going to be great. So are you going to outline it for us and we just color in the lines, or? Yeah, let's make it a coloring book, for sure. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah we'll good sketch idea. it out. And I got some spray paint. I've got some acrylic. We can. Just mess Sweet. around and have some fun. All right, I'm going right. to start. Start us off. Start so, us off. Well, here we go. Uh, I think that red is like a really nice complimentary color for the green. Leaving us a lot of poetic license. Yeah, I mean, that's it's good, art, right? That's a good. It's thing. everybody's own journey. How's your journey going over there, Danielle? <laughs> All right. I mean, a couple things left to do. I still want to sign the... We got to uh, sign it, yeah. Sign the side of the boat. <laughs> oh, I like there these in the whole canvas. <laughs> My penmanship's so bad, I'm going to need the trusty Milwaukee tools. Frank sit on thing. I know one thing, I'm going to nail this tee. We certainly know it's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. You did a fantastic job. This we. Is really. Yeah. We did an awesome We did do a good job, but you, this is a masterpiece. Yeah. Let's get this thing ready and make for some uh, preparations for going fishing. Sounds good. We'd like another shot at that signature. What can you do? Now, I gotta wonder how Das Boat's original owner, John Gary, would feel about a bunch of hippies painting up his nice green hole, but the more I think about it, I think he would love it. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, I think you're hitting the dock. Can't be any worse than your backward F. Red Lake is synonymous with walleye. That's what people come here for. The locals complain about all the sheep's head. They say they can't keep the damn things off their worms, so Danielle and Frank are feeling pretty cocky. They assume worm fishing is easy and that worm fishing for these fish, which are supposedly everywhere, will be even easier than easy. They figure they'll catch a pile of drum right off the bat and then see about trying some other things. But they might just be getting ahead of themselves. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Did I mention hold R? Red Lake is notoriously choppy. It's a giant, shallow pothole. So even a slight breeze kicks up serious waves. Well, serious if you're driving a 14-foot single V like you stole it. I can't tell if Danielle's having fun or if she's terrified. Probably a little of both. All right, so... We're about to grab some bait here, Danielle, but 
This is kind of the traditional walleye crawler rig. Um, do you want to go night crawler or leech? We're going to kind of mix it up. Night crawler. That's OK. Well, great. <laughs> I don't want the leech. I don't want the leech either. I'm kind of <laughs> a little bit afraid of them. You know, this is just a, this is my best guess as far as uh, what we've been told by the locals here. You know, everybody catches drum while walleye fishing. So right. let's go walleye fishing with some drum friendly things and start there. So I'm guessing all these people out here are walleye fishing? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole fleet out here and uh, seems like we're the smallest boat, huh? Why is that? Because uh, <laughs> other people in boats this small aren't the, as stupid as us. <laughs> Danielle and Frank start out trolling crawler harnesses because, well, that's what everyone else does, and everyone else says you can't help but catch a bunch of freshwater drum when you're doing it. Think about it. How hard can worm trolling be? I don't know, Danielle. I'm not sure how well we're doing this. I feel like we're going slow enough. Turns out I'm not a very good troller, Danielle. Are you intentionally trying to zigzag? Um, not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I got something going on here. What did he leave mine for yours? Yeah. All right, here we go. There's something, what? there's something happening. Danielle, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you got a fish. Good news is I've got a fish. Bad news is, so this is, you ever, you ever seen a walleye up close before? Uh, not that little. Turns out I'm not quite the horrible troller I thought I was. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Does it feel like it? Yep. That's it. Start reeling. That might be a decent walleye. Just kind of go easy on him for a sec. Nice. Oh. That is a mutant crappy. Whoa. Check He's out. huge. He is huge. Ooh, you're a solid Christopher Walken plus. Yes. They start out catching fish, just not the fish that everyone says you can't keep off your hook. Seeing some fish on that thing, Danielle? Um, possibly one. Some folks assume that trolling live bait is mindless. You just drag a worm around and then reel in fish after fish. I'm here to tell you it's not. There's a learning curve. You've got to have your bait at just the right depth and travel at precisely the right speed. You've got to differentiate subtle bites from your sinker bouncing off rocks and immediately give line because the fish will drop the bait if they feel any pressure. Finally, you've got to know how long to wait before you set the hook. It usually pays to approach a new fishing situation with humility. That was a good practice for the real thing. Right, right. You know, Danielle, I don't know if it's my imagination, because I've got a very vivid imagination, but it feels like these drum bites are a little bit softer and less deliberate. That makes it extremely difficult, considering we just keep uh, running the bottom of this crawler against all the rocks. You just can't, it's just so soft, you can't really differentiate between the rocks and the fish. I thought I felt something. Oh my God, I've got Danielle. Hold, up, hold still, Danielle, don't do much. <laughs> I got something. While drifting dual night crawlers astern, Danielle and I both really excited to get what we were certain was a pickup. It was not, it was us catching each other. So now, Danielle's line has woven a hammock around my night crawler. I mean, look at this thing, it's like quilted. Oh my God, <laughs> it's not, makes no sense. How could it be here? I like the idea of fishing, but I'd really rather just rig. Eventually though, Frank and Danielle start to get the hang of this style of fishing. You got it? I got him. Uh, all right. I think it's a germ. Big walleye. <clears throat> wow. Whoa, nice. he is pretty. Out here trying to catch some drum. We caught a walleye. <laughs> a nice one, too. Yeah. You know, that's the beauty of this place. Minnesota is so full of delicious fish. This one we know is delicious. Yeah. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh. <gasps> yeah. <Woo -hoo! laughs> yes! Give me some of that. We got a drum. Oh my gosh. And you know what? He really looks delicious. Something's here. 
Yep, he's there. All right. Ooh, I've never done this. It's a nice, check it out, it's a big drum. No way. Way. Good job. All right, look at him. So to bleed him out, I'm just gonna cut through his gills, just at the base of his gills. Blood on Das Boat. Getting pretty bled. Yeah, bleeding him out will yield a much cleaner tasting meat. Um, I think a lot of the fish flavor obviously comes from some of that blood and not bleeding it out. And probably people who've had it in the past and said they disliked it probably didn't bleed it out. And right onto the ice. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, fish. We appreciate you, freshwater drum. Oh, wow. These were in the way. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I've learned to be skeptical anytime I hear how easy it is to catch a certain fish, especially when it's a fish that people don't want to catch. The volume of bycatch that people are getting seems to grow exponentially in their recollections of it. Trolling for freshwater drum on Red Lake didn't turn out to be nearly as easy as Frank and Danielle were told, but in a way, that made the whole thing a lot more fun. They may not have caught a pile of drum, but they're not going home empty-handed either, and they're about to discover one of the coolest things about these fish. Okay, Frank, so before we like clean this up and get back to shore while we're out here, I wanna find if this thing I read about is true, that inside these drums, there are stones in their he head. I, I believe that's how they age fish, is they look at the stones and measure. Oh, I thought they had letters on them. I don't know. Let's, anyway. Let's find out. Start by half beheading. Turns out this is a pretty good otolith knife. <laughs> if that's what you. Oh. <gasps> I don't know where it is. Well, yeah, I think you're banging on it. No, that's a. That's a. That is. <gasps> oh my God! It's like a seashell. It is like a seashell. I told you you were banging on it. Um, I don't see any letters. All right, I'm pulling out the Oh one my up. God, there is a letter. If you turn it this way, there's an L. There is no. Yes, there is. All fish have what? otoliths or inner ear bones that help them orient themselves, but freshwater drum have unusually big ones. Great Lakes beachcomber call them lucky stones. Ancient North Americans may have prized them as amulets, luck charms, and possibly even currency. They're often found in archeological sites, even ones far from water where these fish live. Well, I'm dying to know what they taste like. I'm gonna put this thing in the cooler. Let's, uh, let's head on out. This is all going wrong. <laughs> no, 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 you've totally got this. This is Danielle's first time ever loading a boat on a trailer. And if you watch season one, you know that Frank is the last person who should be teaching her how to do this. You've got it. You're so on course. This is terrifying. No, Maybe you should get out of the way. It's, ex it's not ex terrifying, it's exciting. Ah! That's it, out of girl. Oh, there you go. Yep. Good. Perfect. 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 Keep it coming. Yeah. You did it. Oh my God. Danielle and Frank didn't exactly fill the cooler, but they didn't get skunked either. They have a plan to treat these fish right, and since they managed to catch a nice walleye and a crappie, they do a side-by-side -side taste test and see how the sheep head stacks up to their more beloved neighbors. Okay. Oh, Danielle, this looks fabulous. I know, I love seeing fresh produce. So I'm kind of going for a Creole theme, okay. Cajun theme. Should we get a uh, bell pepper? Yep. Can we get this purple one? Yep, we'll also get a green one. What about that color? That's also purple. Mm. Chocolate, chocolate. Chocolate. We'll get some of these. Wow, I um, smell those. Can't smell much through my mask, but I guess that's the point. Okay, this is what we need. I wish we needed more. I know. All right, well, thank you so much, thanks for I appreciate it. Thanks for letting us stop by so much, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great weekend. <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you ready to clean some fish? I was born ready to clean fish. Um, got a whole cooler full here, quite the assortment as well. This is freshwater drum right here. So if I start the fillet and leave some color, so what I'll do is I'll make, yep. make my cut here 
and take it really far forward. These guys have such a big shoulder. What do you think? You like that angle? Yep, that's good to me. This knife is legit. One of the things, one of the things I really like to do that I was taught was really be, take your time, be kind of slow and gentle when you're sort of locating the cut for the top part of the fillet. Just use the tip of a knife so you really do have to have a sharp knife. You just want to kind of take pains to make sure you separate the fish skin from the top of the backbone area and fins, etc., at the top of the fish. The better this cut is, the better the fillet ends up being. I appreciate the attention to detail, Frank. Separate but if you keep filleting in glacial time, this is going to be a long ass episode. Can we please speed this up? With the knife. Looks like you've got a handle on this. I'm going to grab the other knife and start cleaning more fish. Sounds good. Ooh, look at our handiwork here, Danielle. I know, we've got a nice bunch of fillets. It's just so clean, white. Okay, Frank, I'm cooking three different recipes. The first, we need to try it salt and pepper only, just in its pure form without, you know, piles of butter and lemon and like all sorts of other stuff in there, just because I really want to get a grasp of what it tastes like naturally. We have some on the half shell, grilled salt and pepper. And the second recipe is blackened. Traditional drum recipe. Yeah, and serve that with a dirty rice. And then last but definitely not least, we're gonna have to fry it. So we're trying a few different batters, fry it up, and serve it with a little remoulade. Yeah! Oh, I'm just kidding. God dang it. <laughs> All right, we did it. You I ready? Know. Yeah, I think um, before we dig in, uh, we should try salt and pepper first, just to like know what it tastes like base level without any of the stuff. It's really good. It's super, super mild. Like, I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't say it has like big buttery flakes like a redfish. It definitely doesn't, but I would say the texture is like more bouncy. Does that sound weird? No, no, it's true. Oh my God, it's a great like a texture. shrimp. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't taste sweet like a shrimp, but it's got a texture of a shrimp. It would be like if you had a shrimp that tasted like a walleye. I feel like also we need to really, now that we've established that it's wonderful in its basic form, the fried fish challenge is sort of the regional culinary method. How good is it fried? For you, my dear. Thank you. All right. It's really good fried. Totally. It tastes like chicken. Mm. But with a better texture. Yeah. God, that is delicious. Like, once upon a time in the Great Depression, these fish were popular food to eat because they needed, they needed it to survive. And it's like, how did it lose its popularity? Like, what happened? Is it, is it just the cultural phenomenon when you like come out of that era that it's a reminder of a bad time and you don't want to eat it and that just gets passed down? It's just interesting to think, to think about how we approach food. Well, and it's not like, it's not like the fish itself has changed. Right. The fish was, you know, people thought the fish was delicious once upon a time. At some point, the culture said freshwater drum, probably, you know, let's call them sheephead. Yeah. And they're not that good to eat. I disagree. I totally disagree. Beyond establishing the freshwater drum are really legit to eat, what's been your favorite part of this trip to Minnesota? Driving the boat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Hey, you were good uh, at it. That was, that was actually at. not my favorite part. That was a... Um, oh, I saw you. It so was. It was fun it so and also was. terrifying. Um, actually, not even having my phone on me, putting the phone in a truck, going outside, and just saying goodbye to the world for a little while is, is really my favorite part. I liked when it glassed off on Red Lake. It became super flat calm. You couldn't see 
where the sky ended and the lake began. Mm -hmm. That was really pretty amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Really Just nice. lakes like that in all directions. Here's to Minnesota and freshwater drum. Cheers. Cheers. Fishing doesn't always go the way you expect it to. That's part of the appeal. Sometimes the fish aren't where they should be. It's just surprising with all these bugs, man, that you can't just look down that food path and see rises, you know? Sometimes you have to give away your secrets to protect them. Like, I am not willing to have a poison river, regardless not, of the yeah. fish or anything else. Sometimes you rediscover simple childhood fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the fish you don't catch mean more than the ones you do. Sometimes the thing that everyone takes for granted turns out to be a worthy and difficult pursuit. And sometimes the damn boat falls off the trailer. Oh, shit. Wow. Those of us who fish relish not knowing what's going to happen when we grab rods and tackle, trailer up the boat, and hit the water. That space of unknowing keeps bringing us back. Fishing is an act of exploration, prospecting an aquatic world where few land animals are truly comfortable. Next time you find yourself with an afternoon to kill, go out and do some exploring. And just remember, strap down the boat first. This is Das Boat.